Hello, welcome again to We Would See Jesus. Today is Easter Sunday, uh, when we traditionally uh, celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm going to dive right in to the subject, what God has given to Jesus. What God has given to Jesus. The book of James, every generous act of giving and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father who made the heavenly lights, in whom there is no inconsistency or shifting shadow. You see, you and I, O oh God, our Heavenly Father, every good for every good thing in our lives. You know, I recently wrote a Facebook post and said something to the effect, you know, every person should make a list of every single thing that they enjoy. Then thank God for making such an enjoyment a reality. You see, every pure enjoyment in our lives is a gift from our Heavenly Father. And today we're going to examine many of the gifts that God has given to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to start in the book of John. And this is John the Baptist speaking. For he, meaning Jesus, is sent by God. He speaks God's words, for God gives him the Spirit without limit. You see, I have the Spirit of God in me, and I hope that you also have the Spirit of God in you. But you know what? You and I are given God's Spirit in a measure. We just give it, it's a limited measure. But Christ Jesus received the Spirit without limitation. And without a measure. And that's why the fullness of God is in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm not saying that all of the quantity of God is in Christ Jesus, because God fills eternity. But all of the qualities are in Christ Jesus. And this is why, you know, when the disciples and Jesus were on, out in the, uh, the Sea of Galilee and there was a huge storm, the wind and the seas obeyed Christ when Christ said, peace, be still. And everything went to a pure calm. The sea was just like glass. And they, and they were like, what kind of a person is this that the wind and the seas obey him? Not just the wind and the seas, but also demons obey him because God is in him. So when Christ spoke, come out of this man. They had no choice but to come out of him. They have to obey um, God. And Christ can also forgive sins. Now, this is an important one, very important, because only God can forgive sins. In fact, the Pharisees, they accused Jesus of claiming to be God because he forgave sins. And you know what? They were absolutely correct. Because only God can forgive sins. And let me explain. If you steal my bike, I have the ability to forgive you. But if you steal my neighbor's bike, I don't have the right to forgive you. Because you didn't sin against me in that. Only my neighbor could forgive you for that. But all sins are against God. Whether you stole my bike or whether you stole my neighbor's bike, makes no difference because both of those acts were sins against God. So only God can forgive sins because the sins are against him. The next thing, Jesus speaking, my father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. And what he's talking about here are the believers, the brothers and the sisters. So the next thing that God gifted to Jesus was a family of brothers and sisters. In fact, the Bible says that Christ is the firstborn among many brethren, and that's in the book of Romans 8, 29. And so Christ is our big brother. And I learned at a young age how important it is to have big brothers. And I had two big brothers um, because I was kind of a runt. You know, I was pretty tough. But I was the kind of person that bullies would single out of a crowd, somebody that they could pick on. You know, in fact, the girls of school, you know, they, 
they would say of my friends, and you know, oh, he's so handsome, or he's so good looking. But all I got, he is so adorable. And it's like, that's not what a young man wants to hear. Oh, he's so cute. I just want to pinch his cheek, you know. And in fifth grade, um, uh, I shared uh, my fifth grade um, year with my cousin, Mark. And Mark was uh, and this school, went up to sixth grade, and he was already well known as the toughest kid in school. And he was. I mean, this kid was tough. And he had like five brothers, you know, and when you have five brothers, you get tough because you're always fighting somebody. <laughs> so, so Mark was kind of my guardian angel, you know, because again, I was the runt of the school. I was the, the, the smallest kid in class and no one would pick on me. As soon as they found out that Mark, we shared the same last name. It's like, they just laid off. Was, don't, don't bother him. It's like, why is he tough? It's like, no, but his, his cousin is, <laughs> you know, don't, don't mess with him. I still remember one, uh, one guy that, you know, ventured to uh, pick on me and Mark caught wind of it. And Mark would chase him around the playground. And the, the guy was faster than Mark, but he was scared to death of him. And he would just, Mark would chase him around the playground. It's like, you leave my cousin alone, you know. You see, on our own, we may not be able to win every spiritual battle. But remember, we have a big brother, and he can beat anybody. He's the toughest in, in, in the universe. Next scripture. The father loves his son and has put everything into his hands. And anyone who believes in God's son has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. And again, this is a quote by John the Baptist. Uh, so God has placed everything into Christ's hands, under Christ's authority. Everything and everyone is placed under Christ's authority. And the next scripture is similar. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So very similar, but this one takes it one step further um, it, because Christ is the only one who can give eternal life. In fact, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. So God is able to grant us eternal life through believing in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And the Bible also declares in the book of Revelation that Christ Jesus has been given the keys to death, hell, and the grave. So we can escape death through Christ Jesus. We can escape hell fire through Christ Jesus. And yes, we can escape the grave through Christ Jesus. You see, whoever has keys, it places the holder of those keys in the most important position. For example, if I have a key to my car, the only way you can get legitimately get into my car is if I unlock the door. I have a key to my house. The only legal, legitimate way that you can enter into my home is if I unlock the door and let you in. Christ has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And here it works in reverse. He can unlock these places so that we can escape them. So through Christ, we can escape death, hell, and the grave. Next verse. For this reason also God highly exalted Jesus and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the next thing that 
that God gave Christ Jesus um, is a name that is above every name. So you stack up every name on the face of this earth that ever has touched foot on the face of this earth. Christ tops them all. There are approximately 4,200 religions in the world today, and the name of Jesus tops the list of all gods, whether gods of the, of the past, the present, or the future. And Jesus said this, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. How much power? 33% of all power? No. 90%? No. 100% of all power has been given to Christ Jesus. You see, God gave everything to Christ, and then God gave Christ to us so that we might receive the gift of eternal life. And that's what we have for you today. God bless you all. We'll see you next week.